show you is a couple more situations where we want to find the potential using integration. And then I want to show you another way to find potential for certain cases. So um, remember last week, we left off over here. We, d we took a rod, and the rod had a charge of 2 microcoulombs, length of 10 meters, and B was 5 meters. And we, we calculated the potential at uh, certain points. And we noticed that it was easier to calculate potential than electric field because you didn't have to worry about using symmetry because the potential is a scalar. So we were actually able to find the potential at the midpoint, at the end, uh, at the y-axis, and at the x-axis, five meters away. And uh, we also noticed that the potential here was the largest, three megavolts. And at the end, it was 2.6 megavolts. And over here was 1.98 megavolts. Remember, and we made sense out of that. We said. It should be the least here because this point is the farthest point away from uh, the rod, whereas this one should be the largest where it's the, the middle point. So now what we could do is a similar rod but a non-uniform charge density. Okay, so non-uniform rod. Let's say its linear charge density is increasing as uh, we could say like this, uh, kappa x, where x is defined from the left end, where x is from a left point of rod. Now, I could do differently also. I could say x is defined from the center of the rod. Then there will be a little different problem. So the charge will increase that way and that way if it's defined from the middle. So uh, uh, on the test, usually if I give a problem like this, I'll tell you where the x is defined from. If it's defined from the left point, if it's defined from the middle, then that changes how you set up the integral. Okay. So if it's defined from the left point, so we, we do is, um, let's say I want to find the potential in the, the middle right here. So here's the x, y axis. And I take a little piece, and I say the potential due to this at that point. So this is 5 meters. This time, I'm just going to do straight with numbers instead of getting a general answer. So I'm just going to do the, the, the whole thing with numbers. So I'm going to say this distance is going to be uh, what? Uh, well, in this case, since the length is 10 meters, uh, the midpoint here is going to be 5 meters, right? From here to here is going to be 5 meters. So uh, this, is, this thing is going to be 5 minus x, right? Because the distance from here to here is x. So the, the distance from any, inter, uh, any uh, you know, element dx to that point is going to be square root of this squared plus that squared, right? Uh, 5 squared plus uh, 5 minus x quantity squared. So the potential due to that is going to be k dq over that distance. Twenty-five plus 5 minus x squared. And then at that point, I say dq is lambda dx. over this whole thing. And then at that point is where I put lambda is equal to kx, a kappa x. OK? So now the potential is going to be equal to integral k. Lambda is going to equal kappa x dx over square root of 25 plus 5 minus x quantity squared from 0 to 10. Okay, if the x was defined from the middle point of the rod, right, then you, you could do the integral, uh, then the limits of the integral would be negative 5 to 5. Okay, so that, that's where the, uh, the limits of the integral changes, and the distance formula here would change a little bit also. So at this point, we can factor out the k kappa, 
And then we can do the, the rest of this integral using the ti. So it's a definite integral, so you should get some number here. So while I do it, you guys also put it into your ti. It's going to be uh, x divided by parentheses 25 plus another parentheses 5 minus x close parentheses squared close parentheses to the power 0.5 right so x divided by that thing 25 plus 5 minus x squared square root and then it's going to be comma x comma a 0 comma 10 8.8137, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep as much of it as I can. So the integral gives me that, okay? Then I do another integral, just like for electric fields, right? I do another integral so that I can get rid of kappa. This one integral will be the total charge of the rod. The total charge of the rod is going to equal lambda dx from 0 to 10. And then lambda is going to equal kappa x. And then the, this one will help me to relate the kappa to the q so that I can get rid of kappa. OK, so this one's going to be kappa x squared over 2, right? Uh, x squared over 2 from 0 to 10. So that's going to be 100 over 2, which is 50. 50 kappa. So q is equal to 50 kappa. Therefore, kappa equals q over 50. OK? So then uh, I could put that into that kappa and get rid of kappa. So then that's, uh, that will help me get my final answer. So V is equal to KQ divided by 50 times that uh, 8.813736. And the K, now I can put 9 times 10 to the 9th. And I could put the Q, which is 2 microcoulombs. I could put divided by 50. And let's see what we get here. Times uh, 18 divided by 50 times 10 to the third. Is that the answer here? Why did this one come out to be kilovolts or? What, what was the charge? Was it two microcoulombs or two uh, millicoulombs? Two milli millicoulombs. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Because what didn't it didn't make sense to me that. Uh, the power of the 10 was way off. So if it's millicoulomb, that will be 10 to the minus 3. And then that one's going to be 3.172 uh, megavolts. That's interesting. That's exactly the same as for the uniform rod. OK? So. If the, charge is in, if the charge is increasing and you got most of the charge on this side, 